Good day, folks. My name is Paul Rinkin from FedSAS, and on behalf of the FedSAS Center for Finance and Risk Management, we invite Mark Van Sale, GCR Group Chief Operating Officer, um, just to chat a little bit about what they offer into the school environment. Um, Mark, welcome on board, and maybe just give us a bit of an idea of your association with the Center for Finance and Risk Management. How do you find yourself involved with, with our processes there? Thank you very much, Paul. Great, great to be, be chatting to you, and thanks very much for having me on. Um, so within GCI, we've actually we've been working with, uh, with FEDSIS for a, a number of years now, and really what our commitment is is to try and bring financial wellness to schools. So uh, FEDSIS works with us both as a client, and there's a number of FEDSIS schools that also work with us that are clients in their own right. Um, from our work, we've obviously learned that in terms of in terms of the schooling environment, schools all manage on very tight budgets while trying to still deliver quality education. At the same time, they need to try and take care of staff. Um, absolutely crucial uh, crucial in terms of both teachers as well as administrative staff. We need to feel supported and, and more likely to stay in, in the, the education environment. And then schools, lastly, are, are looking for real value for also for their students beyond academics. Um, you know, this, the, the, the most money that, that schools actually end up spending is on their, on their staffing as well as on, on wellness programs and, and items for students that can really see students, students move forward and, and, and really lock in the, the school's reputation in any of their, their, their respective geographical environments. Okay, no, that's, that's great. Um, thanks, thanks, thanks for that overview, Mark. Um, maybe, yeah, you know, a little bit more direct, what sort of products and services? You spoke about financial wellness, and I think wellness in general is a concern in the education environment. It is a stressful environment, but you also want to make sure financially that you are sound and, and sorted from there. So what sort of products or services do you offer directly? If we can, maybe maybe if I can be so bold to move away from the phrase terms more to the understanding terms or the terms that we want to, we want to let our, our schools know about and understand the process. No, no problems. So uh, th there's essentially three core areas that we focus on. So the first is in terms of helping schools make the most of their financial resources and their budgets to, to create value. And in there, there's a number of financial products that we offer. So the first being, of course, um, employee benefits, uh, which is where a lot of schools are, 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 are our clients. And this is where we look at the investment solutions as well as risk solutions, uh, things like group life, provident funds, pension funds, those sorts of things for, for schools. And we consult to schools. And, and a great example is we we took on a school the other day and um, we actually ended up saving them roughly about 60% of their consulting fees, um, whilst obviously simultaneously enhancing their benefits package in terms of some of the risk the risk items that they were exposed to. Um, outside of employee benefits, we can, we can offer um, healthcare solutions, so things like medical aid, medical insurance, and gap cover consulting. Um, as well as short-term commercial commercial insurance. So this is where we might have tailored protections for school assets, uh, buildings, vehicles, equipment, those sorts of things, as well as liability policies where, where needed. So this obviously looks to safeguard schools from uh, you know, costly damages or, 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 or losses. Um, outside of the, the, I guess, more traditional financial services products, we also look to... Um, ensure that school, their staff and also pupils are empowered through financial literacy. And there we actually have a, a program called the Financial Freedom Program. And what we do there is we essentially look to, to coach uh, both staff and then what we do for high schools, we'll tend to throw in um, grade 11 and 12 pupils as well mm -hmm. to coach them on financial literacy, uh, financial principles, and really just make sure that they're equipped with the knowledge and tools they need to make good financial decisions. Um, and so far, you know, any, any kind of business or school that we've engaged in in that program, we've actually seen real improvement and we're able to measure, measure it, but real improvement in financial well-being. And what we do there is we, we use a combination of technology, workshops, and individual one-on-one -on -one coaching to achieve, to achieve those goals. And then the third piece is, 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 is via our wider group, is we have a program that we call the Your School Program, which is, uh, enables a, a school to generate affiliate income through financial services that are already being utilized in the school's wider community, which might help to fund important projects and initiatives without placing any additional burden on, on budgets and those sorts of things. 
Um, so it effectively tries to boost income for the school while also enhancing staff and student well-being. Okay. Yeah, th those three focuses are really critically important. I think equally important in the process. And I think what what problems would you say you solve at a school? If I can ask you, maybe give me three or four, two or three problems that you say you focus on and, and what would you solve at a school? So I've, I've been involved in, in this. So outside of my career, I've also been involved in school communities um, over a number of years. I used to be the finance the finance chair of a public school on, on that governing body a, a number of years ago. And I currently serve as the, the finance chair of the FINCO on, on uh, at the school that my children go to the, today. And I've been involved with them for a number of years. And, and really, you, you are correct in your assessment that uh, you know, taking care of the people aspect is, is is the biggest element. So, in terms of problem solving, um, you know, in, in our discussions with schools, we often find that from an employee benefits program, for example, um, it's not revisited uh, for many many years. It's kind of left for you know, a decade at a time before someone really comes and looks at it. And often we we're, we're able to keep some of the providers honest and make sure that the the benefits to schools and to the staff are are improving with time and as as they need to while still making sure that that, that costs are, are, are taking the right shape as well. Um, you know, obviously in terms of things like short-term insurance, we're able to sit down with a, with a school and, and really look at their, their current policy, um, do a bit of a gap analysis to see if there's any risks that should be being covered um, and not being covered. And then we also look to see where we can, where we can do the, a bit of value-added products. So this is where, where there might be some... Uh, specific needs for that, that the school might have, maybe in, particularly in some of their sporting codes or, or whatnot, where from an insurance perspective, there's there's some better better uh, product or cover available. Um, of course, with the financial freedom program, the biggest problem that we solve is is around financial literacy, um, and it's a really it's really around making sure that people are able to take the right decisions um, in terms of their finances. And uh, often people, particularly as they move on in life, you know, when you get to about 35 years old, uh, people maybe feel a little bit embarrassed around their, uh, around their finances mm -hmm. because they might have made a couple of, couple of decisions that, that, that they could have made wiser ones as, in, in the fullness of time. <laughs> but at, at the same time, by the time they might reach their mid-40s, they've now been also through the, through the uh, I'd say through the ringer a little bit in terms of they might have had one or two financial advisors they're now reaching an age where, where actually it's, it's not necessarily about embarrassment, but it's more about, I don't know where to turn. Um, yeah. I don't quite know where to look to get the advice that, the, the advice that I need. And very often um, on a personal level, people feel that you know, financial advisors or financial advice firms are there to try and um, you know, sell them a product. Mm -hmm. And our approach is completely the opposite. Our approach is not about trying to sell a product. Our approach is around looking at somebody's financial life and seeing where it is that they that they're headed, and where are they potentially going to go, and then giving them a number of levers that they can pull to say, well, actually, um, I don't want to let's say end up in that particular situation. I think these things are more important to me in my life, and that might not even involve the financial product whatsoever. But it often gives people the clarity of thought so that they make better decisions just generally as they as they move through their lives. So from a financial freedom program, that 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 is absolutely absolutely key. And what, what I'm particularly passionate about and what I quite enjoy the idea of is empowering grade 12s and grade 11s before they enter the workforce, before they get lured in by credit cards and, uh, you know, fancy clothes and other things that they, you know, fancy cars that they could go and spend their money in and uh, money on and start incurring debt. Um, where if we can equip them with the right kind of sensor in terms of financial um, decision making, yeah. um, they can definitely move, move, move forward a lot quicker. And it's not about kind of being the fun police either. Uh, yeah. It's it's just really about equipping people with the yeah. the, the right the right tools. Yeah, you mentioned the word retirement, and I think we often talk about retirement because it's a, a, a lot of things like where you look at a group provident fund uh, that a school would have in place. It's geared towards what happens at a, at a retirement point. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that people, particularly nowadays and into the future, live far beyond that retirement age. And we have to get people thinking about their financial wellness throughout the entire course of their life, not just around whether I'm going to meet a magical date of 65 or whatever the, yeah. the, the date is, and, and now it kind of all ends. There's still planning to happen beyond that point. And um, so we, we're pretty much looking more, not necessarily at the word retirement, but more at, at financial wellness overall throughout the course of a person's life.
And when you change that frame of reference and that, that time scale, it opens people's minds up to a lot more possibilities. And there's a lot more enthusiasm and a lot more, I call them aha moments when you're actually talking to an individual, um, which is, which is really, really great. And, and, and the beauty about that, um, that financial freedom program is that, yes, we'll do workshops with people, but, but the, the, the piece that comes out of the information that comes out of that one on one coaching, which is obviously totally confidential. There's, there's, um, you know, the school doesn't, that, that doesn't, you know, get any information around that whatsoever. Yeah. But yeah. those aha moments that happen there and where people kind of, their eyes almost, you can actually see them going, aha, okay, I, I now understand a few things that I didn't before. Mm-hmm. And um, I think a lot of a lot of the time, particularly in education, um, we're afraid, and even as, as a governing body member today myself, we're, we're, you're often afraid of teachers leaving the education sector to move into the private sector uh, or something along those yeah. lines. Um, but the reality is that that's not the case. You know, teaching is a calling. Education is a it's something deep within and within the people who are involved in that in, 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 in the industry. Whether it's as an administrator or someone who looks after the grounds or someone who, who's front line facing um, facing children every day. And mm-hmm. um, the reality is, it's not actually about the money. But if we can change change some of the financial behaviours, the money piece becomes quite rewarding in any event, um, without the need to to kind of move into the private sector. Or do something that you really just don't have a passion for. Yeah, and I think I think we almost owe it to those passionate educators that are there to find systems and processes to help them so that they don't have to stress about the financial side. Yes, it's a reality. We've got to consider it, but so that they can actually manage their financial well-being better and then focus on doing what their passion is because I think that, that's really where it boils down to. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mark, you may, you mentioned you're on a, on a governing body, so you'll probably understand this question um, or, or the, this discussion. Pricing and cost of the products that come through to to um uh, educators or schools that are engaged with you? I know it's going to be a very difficult answer um, because it depends on the environment and depends on, on the on the, on the the school that you're dealing with. But give us an idea of what sort of costs, you know, if I was sitting as a chairperson of a governing body and you approached me, the first thing my finance chair would say is, how much is this going to cost the school? Because that's how finance people work. They want to know what it's going to cost. And no matter how much I point out the good positive benefits that we've spoken about now, they're going to want to know what the cost is. So so what sort of pricing model do we look at? What sort of pricing structure, some sort of indication? Yeah, so, so there's, I think there's three points that I want to cover in this. Um, uh, we obviously offer flexible pricing tailored to schools' needs and you know, what the various policies are that we might be, might be dealing with. But um, I think there's three categories of pricing overall. So the first is, um, of course, the number of the financial services. So let's talk about the financial services products. Yeah. These are things like short-term insurance, healthcare, um, as well as the employee benefits programs. Those are regulated, and we oper- we operate within the regulations of those. Um, and, and a big focus in all of those uh, environments is to save the school money and get the maximum benefit for what they could possibly possibly get. And and the the the, the saving of the money or the time is not necessarily always a rand value. Um, often it is, you know, for example, the school that I mentioned where we said 60% of consulting costs. But uh, we, we dealt with another client the other day where um, we got the insurer not necessarily to, to reduce costs, but to in- increase the free cover limit for life insurance. So what yeah. that means is that less people had to worry about going for medicals and for health checks before mm-hmm. they could become insured at higher levels. So massive value add because it reduced things like time out of the office yeah. and people worrying about those sorts of things. But in terms of financial products, I think that the, the, the net point for me is that we, we effectively stick within the regulated uh, maximums. In some cases, like healthcare, it, 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 it doesn't cost the school any more or any less when you look, to look at a medical aid. And things like insurance and the short-term insurance, um, that's where we will, we will look to reduce costs as much as possible, but always playing within the, 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 the right realms. Um, and often we, we look at whether the benefits are commiserate with the the risk that's being taken mm-hmm. by, by the school and by the insurer, and where we can always reduce that, then, then we do. So it's, it's obviously difficult to give a rands and cents answer yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. that. All right. So when it comes to the financial freedom program, and this of course includes the workshops, the technology piece, as well as the coaching of individual uh, staff members, this is at 9,700 rand per month, and that's for up to 200 staff members. Of mm-hmm. course, we recognize that schools often have less people, depending on the size of the, size of the school, but, but nevertheless, that, that is the bucket in which it, it, it okay. would fall. 
So the, the, the advantages that we've kind of thrown in for schools is that we'll include grade 11s and grade 12s yeah. at no extra cost. So if you actually look at the reach per, per member, then that yeah. comes down quite significantly. Okay. Of course, in, in the case of the Financial Freedom Program, a number of our, our clients have asked, well, instead of paying monthly, can we, can we pay up front for a year? And in that case, yes, we do allow that and we give, we give roughly about a 15% discount for our so, so there's definitely, you know, a, a bit of malleability and flexibility uh, in, in that. Um, and then the last piece that I want to speak about is, mm. is just really that, that affiliate program that I spoke about, the Your School program. Yeah. And that actually goes the opposite way. That's about putting money back into the school. Yeah. And, yeah. and there we would talk to a school to say, well, look, uh, depending on the school's uh, appetites and how we, could, how we could work together, we would actually look to, uh, you know, hopefully cover the costs of all of these things by yeah. uh, fees that we would pay back to the school for, for referrals um, uh, within the community uh, that the school has access to, um, so those those are essentially the three the three main areas that I would cover. I think that's a big thing, and if people have been drifting off in this discussion, just remember that that there is a, a payback process as well into this into the into the whole arrangement or into the whole association. And I think that we're seeing more and more. And if we're talking about this, uh, this, this sort of cover is necessary. It's happening everywhere. So if your school can benefit from it as well, um, financially benefit from it in process, then it's really something to consider. Mark, how do your schools go about getting hold of you? Obviously, we promote your contact details on our FedSAS marketplace and in our, our, all our operations that we do handle. But how do they get hold of you directly? So they can always send me an email. Uh, my email is uh, mark.fansale at gci.co.za and it's okay. M-A-R-C dot V-A-N-Z-Y-L at gci.co.za. Um, or they can send me a WhatsApp or, or give me a phone call. Uh, my direct number is 82 254-1186. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mark. I know you're a busy person as well, so I'll let you go, but we will definitely um, be engaged in future times. And please, folks, make sure you get the contact details that are at the end of this um, recording. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me again. I really appreciate it. Cheers.